just to start off, uh, where did your uh, mother's side of the family come from? What okay. was your immigration story? Okay, well, uh, my grandparents, Shikri Abushar and Adele Abushar, they were distant cousins and they had the same name. Uh, grandma was, it's conflicting. I thought she was born in Tanta uh, in uh, Egypt. Um, I'm pretty sure she was born in Tanta. And Shikri was born in Beirut, Lebanon. Okay, and Shikri was 21 years older than my grandmother, quite a bit older. Um, the reason that my grand, you want to know why my grandparents immigrated? Yeah. Okay, so Shikri uh, was working for the British um, in Egypt. And uh, apparently a lot of Syrians went, there was a lot of turmoil in Syria, in greater Syria. And I don't know, for some reason, Shikri's family went to Egypt where uh, Shikri was employed by the British. Okay. Um, his mother hadn't heard from his brother uh, in a couple of years. His brother had immigrated to Colombia. And so grandpa went to Colombia to find his brother and found out that he had died. And uh, in the meantime, his job in Egypt you know, disappeared. And he, he liked being in Colombia. He was in Barranquilla. And there was a, a considerable uh, immigration of Syrians and Lebanese into Colombia. So he took over his brother's businesses. Uh, he, he, he had a lot of businesses and he failed a lot of businesses. One thing that he, um, that he was into, he, uh, he produced coffee, he had a coffee plantation, and he had ships. And he would ship coffee over to, um, to Delaware, and he would import uh, dynamite back into Colombia, because at that time they were building the Suez Canal, they were mining, they needed dynamite. And Shukri, um, he, uh, was very well educated and he spoke many languages. And he um, was under the impression that uh, he had a job with DuPont. DuPont was the company that provided the dynamite. And so he went back to the United, he went to the United States and he, he was told he didn't have a job. And the family story is, it was because he was Arab, he was not, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant uh, type that was usually hired. So uh, he went back to, to Colombia. Uh, he met my grandmother, whose family lived in Damascus. Um, and grandma, she went to uh, English school because at that time, the English, the French, and the Russians had spheres of influence in Syria. And uh, grandma went to French school and um, she learned French, she was fluent in French, and she went to an English school. Uh, for some reason, the family, well, her father had been, do you wanna know the details? In any case, the family went to Colombia. Uh, her father had been in Colombia. His, his first wife died, and he went back to Syria to get another wife. And um, they lived in Syria, and they lived in Egypt. And then he wanted to go back to Colombia. Um, Grandpa Shikri, he liked the Americans. I saw, and I can't find the paper. Uh, he was writing something about World War one, and he was saying how he didn't like the Germans and that he had a lot of respect for the, uh, for the Americans. Now he had brothers-in-law, my, my grandmother's brothers were uh, in the United States. And so um, he, went to, um, he went to the United States and he started a bunch of businesses. Emma, uh, her family went, back to, are you, it's okay, went back to um, 
Her mother and father went back to uh, Colombia. And then grandma met Shukri. Grandma's name was Adele. And she was very young when she got married and she had long blonde hair. The story is that grandpa fell in love with her beautiful blonde hair. Anyway, they had um, three or four children and then went to the United States. But somehow, I don't know why, they went back to Colombia. And my uh, aunt, the youngest of grandma's five children, was born in the American hospital in Panama. But eventually they settled, they moved to Brooklyn, okay? And they lived, um, there was an area of downtown Brooklyn, mom said, Henry Street. And at that time, it was, it was really a very upscale community. But when I was growing up, Henry Street was the slums. Um, and I don't, from Henry Street in Brooklyn, they then moved to um, the Sunset District of Brooklyn. And there were a lot of Syrians and Lebanese who lived in that. Around the 40s in Brooklyn, uh, between 5th Avenue and 7th, 8th Avenue, Sunset Park is the, is the area. And uh, my parents, lived around the corner from one another and they were friends. And this was a very, you know, the Syrians and the Lebanese, they, they stuck together and they socialized. And I'll send you some pictures of the, they used to have these big formal uh, gatherings. Women would get dressed up in long gowns and, um, and, and it was a very tight community of a lot of socializing. And they would go up to the mountains. They'd go to the Catskill Mountains. Uh, and I think I mentioned there was a town called Tannersville, where there were these Syrian um, uh, hotels. And they, where you hear Syrian music, Arabic music playing, and very, very social people. Um, a lot of them bought property up in the Catskills in Tannersville. My folks would rent, um, you know, a house during the summer. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if, so you mentioned they first arrived in Brooklyn. Is there a reason why they chose Brooklyn specifically? Um, you know, I'm not sure, but um, there were a lot of Syrians in Brooklyn. Uh, my my father's family. Okay, uh, I sent you the the document that uh, Joseph or Yusuf Humsi he came over in uh, eighteen I think it was ninety eight with his family, uh, and why they came. Um, I had heard that there was his father had died. And, um, but there was also a blight, and I'm not sure if it coincided when uh, Grandpa and his family came. You'll see he came with his mother and his sisters. And, um, there was a blight, uh, the silkworm, uh, Aleppo at that time, because Grandpa Joseph was from Aleppo. Uh, it was a center of silk manufacturing. Anyway, um, he came to the United States and, um, he started a silk mill. And I mentioned also that um, if you go to Patterson, New Jersey, there is a museum there that contains some of the machines that were in Grandpa's factory. It's named, um, the machines are named. Anyway, so um, his family settled in Patterson and then they settled in what was called Little Syria. Um, in Lower Manhattan. And from there, they went to the Sunset uh, uh, area of, of Syria, of uh, Sunset Park area of Brooklyn. Now, a lot of Syrians moved there. Now, why, why my grandfather, uh, Shikri Abushar, went to Brooklyn? I don't know, uh, it's interesting, but, um, he started business there. He, 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 he was not a good businessman. He failed in almost everything he did. 
the ships that he used, that he owned, to export coffee and import dynamite burned down or, or got lost uh, at sea. I'm not sure what happened, but he had no insurance. He had a, he, in, in, in uh, Bananquia, he had a, a plantation, a, a coffee plantation. He also raised cattle. And my great aunt Bertha uh, told, my grandmother's half sister told me that one year they were taking the cows over the mountain in April to, uh, to market and there was a freak snowstorm and he lost it. He lost, so, and my mother uh, lived in this home, um, very self-contained, you know, uh, with a courtyard in the middle and apparently uh, the black hand was put on the door and that was the mafia, whatever it was called in, in, in Colombia. And so my grandmother wouldn't allow her children to go to school. She would have someone come in to teach my, my parents, my, my mother and her siblings. And they had monkey, pet monkeys. And uh, anyway, um, let's see. Um, so if we could sort of think about your time and sort of you were born and raised in brooklyn in brooklyn yeah yeah, yeah. so where in brooklyn were you born and raised? Were, well i i first i was born on 48th street in brooklyn in sunset park area where my grandparents the Holmesies, had a brownstone uh and mom and pop had the top floor and so um when I was about, I'm a twin. Well, my twin sister and I were about two. Uh, my parents bought a house in Bay Ridge because Bay Ridge was a nicer uh, community. It was, it was green. It was by the water, by the narrows. And a lot of Syrians were moving to Bay Ridge. So I was born in Bay Ridge and um, you know, my cousin lived a few blocks away. I had two cousins, uh, two aunts. My grandmother and her sisters lived five blocks up. My mother's sister lived across the street from my grandmother. So it was, you know, uh, my aunt Adele, I had another aunt lived a block away. So it was a very close community and um, you know, we we sort of, we stuck together. We socialized, and I went to Catholic. I went to public school for the first five years, and then I went to Catholic school. But I always felt different, you know, uh, because I wasn't. When I went to the public school, it was mostly Scandinavians, because at that time in Br Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, there was a very large Norwegian and Swedish, uh, yeah. Uh, group. They would have a parade um, every year, a Norwegian parade, and the king of the king of Norway even came. Okay, so I just never felt, you know, I wasn't Irish, I was Norwegian. Irish was when I went to the Catholic school. So you know, very most of my closest friends were my cousins, and then I went to high school, and I. It, I took a bus, it took an hour to get to the Catholic high school. Um, and there, it wasn't so much of a, I didn't feel so different. I was older and I had really good friends. I didn't have good friends in uh, grammar school. Um, Do you think um, there was any sort of reason like was there a big distinction between who was sort of Irish and Scandinavian versus who was Arab? Well in those days the Irish stuck together, the Italians stuck together, the, the Norwegians stuck together, they were all immigrant groups and we're talking about the 40s and the 50s. So life was very different. I mean God forbid you should see an African-American. I mean people were very prejudiced. But, you know, the thing that drew um, people to us was the cooking. People, um, the Syrians are very hospitable people. And when they invite someone over, they make a feast. Uh, you, you know about the food, what it's like. And, and people 
had never eaten food like this. And there was um, a grocery store up on Third Avenue, a few blocks from my home, that had what we called Syrian bread. You call it pita. And there were lines, not only of the Syrians and Lebanese, but the Americans would wait in line to get this bread. It was so good. And she would ration the bread. <laughs> she would only let you get two dozen. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, and then, you know, I went to, um, I, I grew up in a, in a uh, culture, in a family that, where the boys were more important. We were three girls and two boys. And my sisters and I didn't go to fancy schools. We went to, Joanna and I, my twin, we went to the free Catholic school because my mother didn't want to pay the tuition. My younger sister went to the public school, but my brothers went to Poly Prep in Brooklyn and they went to the University of Pennsylvania. My mother didn't think that we should go to college, but we, Joanna, my twin sister and I uh, were very good students. And so, and my father wanted us to go to college. So we went to a Catholic school called Marymount, Manhattan, uh, on East 71st Street, and it was a commuter school. Not, not of the, the quality of uh, the University of Pennsylvania, where my brothers went. Um, my mother said, you don't need to go to college. Go to secretarial school. You're going to get married anyway. So that's, but I met Charlie O'Keefe at a party, and... Uh, we got married and moved to Durham, North Carolina, where he was in graduate school, and on and on and on. But um, do you have any other questions? Yeah, so back to your um, like schooling experience, was there animosity between the different groups? No, and the different no never, never. There was never animosity. There was curiosity. But, you know, we were never invited to the Irish girls' parties because um, that's what predominated. I went to St. Anselm's in Brooklyn. Well, before that, I went to PS 102. But, you know, in public school, uh, we, we, we didn't have any friends. Our friends were our cousins. Um, and just that's the way it was. And did this continue? So when you moved to Catholic school, were the groups still as divided? Divided? Well, in the, in the public school, they were mostly uh, Norwegians. Uh, in, the, in the public school, they were Irish and Italian. Um, no, I mean, there was no animosity. There just wasn't, you know, we weren't part of their culture. We, you know, people didn't have parties like they have, you know, birthday parties. Life was a lot simpler. Um, but, uh, you know, I always knew that I was Syrian and I was proud of it. And my, I remember saying in third grade or fourth grade to my teacher, my family comes from where Jesus was born. Because, um, I, I, you know, I was looking back at the family tree, part of my family settled in Palestine. You know, at that time, there weren't any borders and people moved around into Lebanon or Syria or Palestine, so. But no, no animosity. Um, and so you mentioned your time in, I think you said Tannersville, New York, yeah. uh, in the summers. Um, yes. Could you speak more to like how this aided in your Arab identity? Well, you know, because we were five children, um, we never stayed in the hotels. My parents always rented a house. My grandmother lived with us and, um, uh, you know, we would go over, I'd go over to the hotel because my cousins were there and we played cards and we would hear the Syrian music and, uh, but we didn't, we didn't uh, eat there. Um, oh, one thing, we would be driving in the country and my grandmother would see, and you see them in Granville, they're these wild grapevines, grape leaf vines. I don't know if you know what they are. 
and grandma would make my father stop the car and we'd all go on the road and pick these grape leaves and then <laughs> we'd come home and grandma and mom would make stuffed grape leaves which is called what I added. Um, <laughs> food was a big thing in our family. Um, education was important in our family. Um, I, I don't know, there wasn't this political, um, you know, what you have now, people against the Arabs, because the, the Syrians and Lebanese wanted very much to become Americanized, and they did everything that they could to, to be Americanized um, in their, in their um, business, which is what the, the interact, you know, in school and in business. Um, my father went to the University of Pennsylvania. He, um, he sang, oh, he sang, he was in the children's choir at the Metropolitan Opera. Uh, he was the lead tenor of the Metropolitan Opera uh, Chorus, and he also sang, uh, he, he uh, toured, um, he toured uh, Canada with the Kingston, Ontario Opera Company. We, culture and, and education was very important. And I think that is true today with Arab Americans. Um, so you mentioned sort of this, sorry, to Americanize. Um, did you feel this in your own upbringing? Yeah, I think so. I mean, aside from the culture that I was very proud of, and only when uh, Syria became vilified in the press and the Arabs became vilified in the press because of the creation of the State of Israel. Um, you know, I, I would not admit that I was Syrian because, especially if I was talking to someone who was Jewish. Um, oh, I did have a Jewish friend in when I was working and she heard that my sister and I's family came from Syria. And uh, I guess she thought we were Jewish because there were Jews in Syria who, uh, who left uh, when Israel was created. Did you sort of admit, did you feel any like sort of discomfort in your like Syrian and your Arab like self when no. having these conversations? Never, never. It's just, you know, I, 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 my father was the kind of person who didn't like conflict, and so uh, he inbred that in me. Or maybe it's just my personality, but I just never wanted to, you know, talk about it. And I don't look typically Arab, and the name, my maiden name was Homsey. It it's, wasn't, a lot of people changed their names, um, but uh, Homsey, you know, it could be who knows? They used to call us Homesley. <laughs> uh, anyway. And could you talk more about sort of what your um, brothers and sisters have done? Okay, well, um, I have a twin sister. We went to school all the way through college. And she married a man who, he's a doctor, a vascular surgeon, who... Um, was of uh, Lebanese descent. His family went from Zahle in Lebanon and, and settled in um, the Dominican Republic. So, I mean, a lot of Syrians and Lebanese went to South America. And a lot of it has to do with the history. Um, with, a, um, do you know, there was a, uh, typhoid uh, um, pandemic. Um, there were wars with the, um, in Lebanon, uh, the Druze war, very violent. I have a story that my aunt wrote about the Druze. Uh, let's see. I mean, they went there for economic opportunity and Christians 
were not the dominant religion. Um, the Turks were conscripting the Syrians and Lebanese. Uh, a lot of them left. There was the, 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 um, the what happened with the uh, silk industry um, in, in Aleppo. So a lot of reasons why people um, uh, left. Now, go back to your question. I kind of ramble. I'm sorry about that. What, what did you want to add? What was the original? Question. about your brothers and sister oh okay so all right so um joanne married uh dr lee curie who was actually a fellow of michael de which was quite something uh, my two brothers uh, are both lawyers uh paul uh is a lawyer in the middle east he, he does work in the middle east in the gulf states and jerry was an environmental lawyer uh, my sister Tina, um, she had a very tragic life, and um, she she married uh, someone um, who took her, they they lived in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and Tina loved family. She loved, you know, she was such a giving embracing warm person and she's living i don't know if you know what harrisburg pennsylvania is it's very appalachia uh i'm going to be political very trump and she was living uh and, and she took her life she was not a happy person i think that if she if she had lived near my parents or near my sister in new jersey i think things would have been different so, yeah, my brothers, um, my, my, oh, the older brother, he's traveled, a, both of them have traveled a lot in the Middle East, and they've met uh, family members. Um, and when we were living in Paris one year, I met a cousin, an Abushar cousin. Um, my brother, <laughs> he was working in the, at that time for Sidley Austin in Saudi Arabia. And he uh, stopped off in Syria. And here the, was this single man, American. He's, <laughs> he's uh, a lawyer. <laughs> and they, they just made a feast for him. And they try to fix him up with uh, uh, one of the unmarried uh, daughters who, uh, who lived in Paris, who we met. But Paul was already engaged. Actually, she was engaged, he was engaged and married a Jewish woman. And uh, when he, um, he got married, he had to have uh, some document that said, that indicated that, sh that Shelley was Christian. And so, um, because they wouldn't let them into Saudi Arabia. So uh, a priest friend signed the document. I forgot what it was. That was a long time ago. So um, given that you both of your brothers have traveled um, sort of extensively across the Middle East, do they speak Arabic? Um, my, my younger brother speaks Arabic. But you know, the Arabic in uh, the Gulf is very different from the Arabic in the Levant. So, yeah, uh, and Jerry speaks, you know, a little bit, but I, I don't know. He's certainly not fluent. And as I told you, my father <laughs> taught, Pop spoke a lot of languages too. Uh, he was trained opera singer and uh, he was just gifted in languages. And, um, you know, because we wanted to be Americanized, we were not spoken to in Arabic. My grandmother, didn't speak to us in Arabic. She was fluent in English. My mother and father would only speak Arabic when they didn't want us to understand. But Pop, he, he was very smart. He said, you know, if I teach them uh, to memorize something in Arabic, you know, they would know a little bit. So he taught us the Our Father, the Aban Alizi. And when he was get together with his card plan, and the Syrians, played cards. They loved playing cards. Um, he, would, he would have me and my twin sister recite the Abana Lizzie and they'd all give us a quarter. 
because we said the Our Father. So. Um, so did you feel sort of having you, so these experiences in like sort of increased your um, Arab identity having? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I, um, I mentioned a church called St. Nicholas there on State Street in Brooklyn. I sent you uh, links to that church. Well, when I was in college, I took, I tried to take Arabic lessons, but the people there spoke Arabic. They were much more fluent in Arabic and the teacher wasn't very good. But then when I moved to Granville, I had a friend in, in Barbara Boston. Uh, her husband taught at Denison. She was, her, her parents were from Syria. And um, we took Arabic at OSU. I, I did it for two or three quarters. But, you know, life got in the way. And so I never, and then I tried to take a class with, um, with um, uh, Hanada's predecessor, but life got in the way. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't uh, continue uh, with that Arabic course. Uh, I mean, I wish that I could speak it. I really do. Uh, it, I think knowing another language is, is power. I felt that way when I lived in France and I could speak French you know, you can communicate with other people. And it's interesting, the, the priest who taught Arabic at St. Nicholas Cathedral in Brooklyn, where my sister and I went to learn Arabic, I asked him, I said, what language do you think in? And he said, French, which was interesting because he was from Lebanon. And uh, I had a cousin, my father's cousin who came from Egypt on an exchange, he was a doctor. And um, George Malou was his name. His mother and my grandmother were, were sisters, but he, he, he grew up in, in Egypt. So you see the fluidity of borders. Okay, so um, he, um, what was I gonna say? I, I have these senior moments. Oh, he, um, he came over on an exchange to, uh, he was a gynecologist, and he wanted to stay in the United States. And at that time, they only allowed 100 Egyptians to immigrate into the United States. And so he could stay. And at that time, NASA was, um, he was confiscating the property of the Christians and uh, so his family went to Canada and he went to Canada. Yeah. So you um, mentioned a family tree. Do you have a sort of a document of this? Yeah, I do. I do. Would you, be, would you feel comfortable sharing it with us? Sure. I'll, I'll, uh, that's incredible. Yes. Um, let's see. I mean, there are all sorts of stories. Um, you know, that we, the family originally came, the Abushar family came originally from Yemen. I don't know. My grandfather, Shikri, he did a lot of research on the family tree. Humsi, I don't have it going back very far. But... Um, Whatever you have would be. Yeah. And, and what's interesting, um, my grandfather's brother was... Uh, offered uh, to be um, a pasha and he refused he refused but then they somehow they made him a pasha and gave him this diamond medallion which his son in canada now has or his grandson now has um, but you know that that was very interesting and uh my aunt said that my grandfather was a bay, and I don't know exactly what bay means. So, you know, we were very proud of our family. Um, we're very proud of our culture, uh, very proud of our history. And so we weren't, we weren't influenced. We didn't let any prejudice stop us from doing what we wanted to do. And, you know, most of the Syrians went into business, so they had their own businesses, and they were 
very most of them are very successful. Uh, I have a I have a document here. In nineteen in nineteen twenty nine, I have a certificate. My grandfather, he he had a. It's a company called Sesame Products and Candy Company Inc. <laughs> and they transferred the co corporation. Uh, in 1929 was the depression, so I'm sure he had another bankruptcy. <laughs> but uh, you know, the family, the families all got together and helped one another. Um, my my parents, they lived with during the depression. You know, they lived at home. They contributed, and so the family survived. Um, whereas in a lot of other families, they didn't. Um, so um, the, other the photo you sent us um, of um, Shukri in the car transporting dynamite and yeah. coffee, um, this yeah. is your grandfather, correct? Yeah. Your maternal yeah. grandfather? Yes, yeah. it's my, uh, my what? My maternal mother. or paternal? P uh, maternal. It was okay. my mother. Abusha. Abusha was the name. Uh, my, I have a cousin who went to Damascus. Now, the Abushars, it's a big, big f name in Syria. And um, so uh, Dick uh, was in this hotel, and he, um, he had um, mild stroke symptoms, and he was rushed to the hospital. And who's taking care of him in Syria, in Damascus, but this doctor, Abushar. My, my cousin's name was Abushar. And it turns out, you know, they, they talked about one another. And he said, Abushar, and this doctor was Muslim. Abushar was a saint in, in the Muslim um, culture and uh, religion. But I always heard this sort of story. If you break down the word Abushar, uh, Abu, father, Shar, hair they said <laughs> that's where the name came from who knows you know there's a lot of this uh uh stuff but Hamsi, Homsi, he got his name because the family originated from Hams and went to aleppo um i'm sorry i'm all over the place no not at all okay okay any other um, Eric, do you have any questions? Oh, yeah. oh, you know what, wait, I have pictures that I will send you. Uh, uh, Joseph had these homes, uh, had these businesses uh, in, I don't know what happened to the silk mill, but um, he had two shops on Washington Street, one at 41 Washington Street and one at 103 Washington Street. And I can't find the pictures of him in front of his business. Uh, so I'll, I'll send those when I, get, when I get them from my sister. That'd be perfect. And he, he imported rugs from, uh, he actually, he went to Syria when my father was six. Um, for a year and pop went to school uh, in syria and um grandpa joseph went around the middle east buying carpets to bring home to the united states to sell and so he sold he sold carpets um, that was one of his businesses he also had a factory where he made these beautiful and i'll have to I'll have to get a picture. He made these beautiful silk embroidered shawls. Um, and my father, and he had a, a couple of factories, and my father inherited one of his factories. But you know, the depression uh, interfered so much, and, and grandpa lost everything but the factory my father had. Um, but, um, yeah, he, he, Grandpa also invested in real estate. He bought all this real estate on Atlantic Avenue. And um, uh, my father, you know, he over leveraged. So in the depression, he lost all that real estate. 
So these are people who were very entrepreneurial. Um, Grandpa Joseph's brother went to, went to Fresno and uh, had a farm. And this is the reason I told you about the importing of the jackasses. Uh, that's why they imported these animals. And I'll send you the email um, that, um, because uh, my father's cousin George's wife sent about the, the jackasses. Um, but he became a very successful farmer um, out there. When grandpa was losing his shirt, his brother, uh, I forgot his name, um, was, was making money in, in agriculture. Eric, thank you. That's really interesting. And I would love to see the photos and if okay. um, that's I'll see photos and documents, whatever I have. And anything you have would be yeah. amazing. I'll, I'll even send you a picture. You know, when, when the Syrians moved to the Sunset Park area, they lived in these brownstone homes, and, and which, you know, also went the way of uh, urban blight. But now people are buying them because, you know, they're, uh, they were beautifully constructed. There were these brownstones and, you know, young couples would buy them and renovate them. Um, so that's the history of the homes, the Abushars. I just Anything? Have, uh, one question. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that your mother wanted you to go to secretarial school yeah. while your yeah. father was more supportive of you going to college. Yes. Do you have any expectations for what you and your sister would do with your college degrees? Did he expect you to study anything in particular? Or? No, no. You know, Pop's father was very interested in culture. And that's why, I mean, my father... Um, he, he was in the children's choir in the Metropolitan Opera. He sang in um, um, Carmen when they had the children's. Uh, he was trained at Juilliard. Um, he sang, I mean, he had the most magnificent tenor. Um, but um, his father, you know, the Syrian parents controlled their children and he wanted my father in his business. And so Pop, uh, number one, he, he, he didn't put as much into his career. He, he, he was more supportive of his father. Um, he also, Pop, you know, went to the University of Pennsylvania and he was, he, um, he was offered a job with Welsh's Corporation and his father said, no, you can't go. You have to work in my, you know, uh, in my businesses. This is when Joseph was very successful, but then he lost it all. Um, and so a pop's, pop was very interested that his daughters also be educated because his father, he would take them to museums. He would take them to the opera. Uh, he sent his own daughters to private schools. You know, I mean, girls were not valued uh, uh, like that. Um, but uh, Joseph was, was really into culture. And so my father, he, he went against my mother and uh, insisted that we go to college. But, you know, this was in the early 60s. Uh, coming from the culture that I came from, you know, what do women do? you're going to be a teacher or a nurse. So I went into teaching and, um, you know, that was what was expected of me. And my parents, my father was very proud that Joanne, my twin sister and I were teachers, but my younger sister who, whose life ended tragically, she, she married at 19, which was, why my parents allowed it, I don't know, but um, it was not a happy situation. 